Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are adding another video in the miscellaneous series. In this particular video, we are going to talk about line, volume and surface integrals. Line, volume and surface integrals are necessary as both pre-processing and post-processing steps of ComSol simulation. Today, we are going to talk about the post-processing applications of this line surface and volume integrals and in the upcoming video we will be talking about the pre-processing applications. Before I start the technical discussion on today's lecture I would like to inform that we have initiated a new service where you can write to us and we will help you developing your research problem. So if you want to avail this service write to me in the email id given in the description box and we will set up a video call and discuss about your problems. So let us proceed with today's discussion. So here we have actually solved, we have actually simulated a problem. This is a very common problem which I frequently use for understanding various things. So this is a heat transfer through solid body where you can see three different temperatures two different temperatures are used at the top we have a higher temperature and the other three walls are kept at a lower temperature if I mention exactly this particular edge has a temperature of 500 Kelvin whereas other three edges are kept at room temperature around 293.15 Kelvin so there is a temperature gradient from here to everywhere and because of this temperature gradient heat will be flown and as heat flows the temperature in of the body gradually changes. So one thing we have to understand that temperature of the body gradually change and it is a function of both time and space. What does it mean? If I look at this particular point say look at my cursor say this particular point. Now if you observe this point over a period of time then the temperature at this particular point will change until it reaches to the equilibrium or steady state. Similarly, if you hover through and select any arbitrary point with respect to time, the temperature at that particular point will change. So this is how the temperature becomes a function of space and time. And sometimes if we want to have more information about this temperature distribution across the entire space we may need to talk about the average value of the temp average temperature on the entire body if somebody wants to know what is the temperature at the right top corner then we may need to take an average of the right top corner similarly if we want to know what is the temperature at the middle of the body then we may take a small area at the middle of the body and we may wish to actually calculate the average temperature along the small body taken at the middle of the surface. So let us initially we can do uh, one thing we let us divide the entire body into different parts for that we take other rectangles say this was 2 by 2 and let me take this height 1 and say this 1 1 so let us divide it into 4 region so I can duplicate it shift it by 1 so it will come here you can see we can duplicate another rectangle and say put it somewhere here that means we shift the y by 1 so it will be in the left top corner and so now you can see it is divided into four different region so let us run the simulation once again the result of the simulation will not change because we have just broken the area into four different portions and that's why the temperature distribution remains the same now we will look at the integrations. So when we do a post processing then we have to come here in the derived values option. If we right click on derived values we can see there are multiple options 
we have average we have integration today i will be talking about integration and also i'll talk about what is the relation between this average and integration so let us initially take the line integration say we want to do a line integration of temperature at this particular line so we have to choose this particular line and in the expression we have to give the parameter whose integration we are going to do so what it will do it will basically do integral of t dx on this particular line so if this is zero and this is say l i mean the length of the chosen line say l it is varying from zero to l so the integration would be integral of zero to l t into dx if a small section on the line is considered to be dx now you have to just evaluate it so there are two things whether we want to evaluate the temperature at a particular time step or we want to evaluate temperature at all time steps so let us initially do for a particular time step say from the list i take this particular time and click on evaluate so you can see at this particular time average temperature along this line is 2.93 so yeah so this is the average temperature on this particular line this is actually integration on this particular line if we want to take average then we have to divide it by the length of the line so you can see the length is one centimeter so if you divide it by one centimeter so let us do it say one centimeter then if we do the value will change and this will give me the average temperature but for the time being we are not looking at average we are looking at the temperature integral along this line now let us do the averaging do the integration for all time step i click on evaluate so we get information at all time step now what we can do is we can actually plot this and see how exactly the temperature is varying so you can see the temperature integral is varying like this now again if you want to do a uh, average then you have to divide by the length of the line that is one centimeter i write it here I delete the initial data I click on evaluate so this gives the average temperature along this line and then if we click on the plot so it will show me the average temperature so you can see over time the average temperature is increasing and it will it is obvious that the average will increase because if you look at the problem the temperature distribution so what is happening as the at initial time it was like this the upper wall has higher temperature and all other walls and inside the block it has low temperature but as we progress with time you can see the heat is being flown and the temperature is gradually increasing and as the temperature increases the average temperature or the line integral also increases and that is why we see this kind of plot not this one uh, this is another plot uh, we wanted to plot this one so let us do it again just to show you and then if we plot i have already shown so you can see this is increasing so this is the information on a particular line you can take any line and you can actually derive the line integration now if we go to the surface integration as the name suggests you can take integration on this particular surface say so we just click 
the surface integration then we put the expression t because we are doing integral of temperature and then evaluate and you can see what will happen again with time the average temperature or this one is the in line in, uh, surface integral so the surface integral will also increase so this is how it is increasing so you can see on the line the nature of the curve was different when we are taking the surface integral it is again different so it depends on the, the variation depends on the line it depends on the area you are choosing so let us look at what happens if the line integration the surface integration is taken here instead of the upper one so let us just evaluate again and let us plot it so you see the distribution is different and that is why the importance of averaging importance of line integral surface integral if I change the zone, the nature will change because the temperature distribution on the entire block is different. And if you want to again calculate the average surface average temperature, then you have to divide by the area. Now what is the area? This is 1 and 1. So 1 centimeter square. So what I can write is 1 within bracket cm to the power 2. So it will give me the average surface average temperature. So as you can see, this is how it is going. If I plot it, you can see this is the surface average temperature. Now instead of doing this by T by 1 centimeter square, we can directly do it by taking average. So when you take average, there are again three options, line average, surface average and volume average. And in those cases, we are basically doing the thing like when we are taking surface average on this surface, this is basically doing one by area, area of this particular zone into integral of T into dA. So this will be T into dA because this is a surface integral or you can say t in Cartesian coordinate t into dx and dy where you have to give the limit for your x and y so limit for x is here you can see from 1 to 2 and the limit for y is you can see from 0 to 1 so if I just try to write it here on say I just want to show you how exactly the average temperature, average area temperature is calculated. So let us try to write it down here so that you understand it. So let us insert an equation here. Say whatever equation we take and then change it. So we say T surface average. Say T S. So it will be 1 by so this is how we can take 1 by 1 by area 1 by area multiplied by integral so it will be a double integral so we can take this double integral so in this double integral we will have the limits for both x and y so our x is varying I have shown for that particular one x1 is varying from 1 and the y was starting from 0 so x varied from 1 to 2 so the upper limit is 2 and the y is was varying from 0 to 1 so the upper limit is 1 and here we put t that is temperature and dA either you write dA and dA is equivalent to dx into dy in your Cartesian coordinate system. Similarly, this is the average and when we are calculating the integral only, then we don't need this term. So, this is the surface integral. 
Now similarly, if you if you talk about the line integral instead of the area, you have the line say here. So initially, let us calculate the line average say T L. So here it will be divided by L if L is the length of the line and instead of double integral now we will be having a single integration because we have only one axis so here it will be varying say from 0 to 1 and it will be t into dx if you are taking the line integral or average along x direction if you want to take along y direction it will be t into dy and the limit will be varying uh, from the concept like in our case when we were doing the line integration we were doing from here to here so this point is x equal to 0 and this point is x equal to 1 so our limit will be x equal to 0 to x equal to 1 and t into dx so if you do along this line then your it will be t into dy and the limit will be from y equal to 1 to y equal to 2. So this is how you can actually play around with line integral, surface integral. It would have been a 3D, we would, would have gotten another volume integration. So we are not covering the volume integration. I can realize that you will understand the volume integral. Just convert it in a three dimensional problem and you can calculate the volume integral so today i stop here i hope this particular video was helpful and in the upcoming video we are going to cover about the pre-processing usage of this integrations and we'll be covering similar post-processing and pre-processing topics in the miscellaneous series do watch the entire miscellaneous series because we have uploaded many videos and those are helpful if you are working with Comsol, today I stop here and I would like to request you to subscribe to our channel because it would give us more motivation to upload videos. Thank you.